we got some pretty big news. The Association of Boxing Commissions, or the ABC, are the same people that came up with the MMA rules. Everything we go by, they created. And they just added five new rules to MMA. I don't know exactly when they're implementing them. I don't know if they already did it or they're going to do it for the next event. But we're seeing sources of it today. And I think the Corey Sanhagen fight had something to do with this. Because we know Dana was not happy about that fight. And the third rule change addresses something that happened in that fight. So first rule change. Utilizing a cut person after a foul. When a fighter is the recipient of either an accidental or intentional foul and receives a laceration from an illegal action, the referee in charge, after calling calling time and putting the fighters in neutral corners may call upon the cut person assigned to the injured fighter's corner to enter the cage during the five minute break and administer aid to the cut to help stop the bleeding. Then when cleared by a doctor to return to the action with no more than five minutes elapsed, the cut person may only work on the cut or cuts associated with a particular foul. So they're just going to add a cut person to help aid the fighter if he gets fouled. If he gets like some laceration or something like that. Before it used to be just a doctor and the referee in there that would handle the situation. But now they're going to bring in a cut person if the referee thinks that they need one. Remember, it's all on the referee's decision here. I like this rule. It helps the fight continue on. And that seems to be the purpose of this rule change to let fighters continue after something like this happens. Instead of just calling it off right away. Right? If they can have a cut person come in there and fix it up a bit, it gives more chances for the fighter to continue. And I think it's also better for the fans to watch. Nobody really want to see a fight end due to a cut. Second rule change, positioning fighters for a restart after a foul warning, physician's examination, or point deduction. The intention of this, a fighter should not be allowed to improve their position based on fouling. So this is what it says. When a fighter who is in a disadvantaged position fouls and the referee must stop the action, if it could be reasonably accomplished, the fighters should be returned to their positions after the time is taken from the warning. Physicians examination or point deduction. When a fighter is in a position of advantage fouls, not disadvantage, if he's in the advantage and he fouls, then the referee must stop the action for a warning, physicians examination or a point deduction. The following fighter should lose his position of advantage when the bout resumes. This is worded very strangely. So pretty much... If a guy who's in a disadvantaged position fouls, they'll be returned to that position. If a fighter who's in an advantage fouls, their position will be taken away from them. Note that the terms advantage or disadvantage do not always equate with top or bottom. Ha. <laughs> top or bottom. An example would be a fighter whose strategy is to avoid stand-up and pulls opponent into guard to increase chances of gaining a submission. If the top fighter fouls, it may be more appropriate to return them to the grounded position. I like this. So this just shows to everybody, just because you're on top does not mean you have the advantage. Even the guy on the bottom can have the advantage, and this rule change also demonstrates that. So if a fighter like pulls guard, he's on the bottom now, and he's trying to get a submission on you, but he fouls, that position may be taken away from them. The third rule change. This is a very interesting one, and more important because of some of the fights that just happened. Rule change is standing up fighters from a down position and or breaking fighters while they are standing and pinned against the cage. The referee shall either stand up or break the fighters when neither is either able to or fails to demonstrate real significant and or sustained effort to advance towards finishing the fight by any method. Simply maintaining what may be perceived as a superior position will not be considered effort to advance towards finishing the fight nor grounds for a guaranteed opportunity to maintain their position. So pretty much this is about fighters who are stalling are going to get their position taken away from them. If you are just holding position and not doing anything to advance it, either create damage or do something to transition, the referee is going to break it up. So we're talking about Corey Sandhagen versus Ralph Font. Those positions would have been broken up. We're talking about Marav Devalashvili versus Jose Aldo. Those positions would have been broken up as well. I'm just wondering what happens if someone gets the back and doesn't do much with it. I'm guessing that also gets broken up. And it talks about why they proposed this change. So this is what it says. Inconsistent application of the referee's protocols concerning when to stand the fighters up and break the fighters from the cage. So pretty much, it was just very inconsistent. I always thought this was a rule though. I guess they're putting more emphasis on this. That referees have to break it up if nothing's happening. And the inconsistency of the referee's decisions is the reason why they're making this change. Another reason, fighters are using passivity in pursuit of victory by trying to simply maintain a position without any significant attempt to finish the fight. Their effort and actions reflect merely in attempts to neutralize the opponent, in essence, trying to win by avoiding losing. So they're just staying on top of them, not trying to win the fight, but they're just trying not to lose the fight. The grammar on these are really 
off though. We believe that these two points are closely related and that if we were to better define the referee's guidelines or protocols addressing when it is appropriate to stand up or break fighters, we would achieve greater consistency while simultaneously removing or at least reducing the opportunity for fighters to use a passivity in pursuit of victory strategy which we feel fails to fulfill the terms of their agreement with the promoter and their obligation to the fans who pay to watch the competition. Pretty much showing that the fighters do owe the fans and even the promotion something when they go out there and compete. They can't just sit on top of somebody and win by just holding position. Now it's not just the guy on bottom who's at fault, it's also the guy on top with this rule change. But what if it's the defensive fighter who's stalling and the offensive fighter is trying to transition but he's just getting negated? What happens there? Because it's not always the offensive fighter who's stalling. Sometimes it's a defensive guy. Fourth rule. Proposed eye poke evaluation procedure referee. As required per foul language regarding eye pokes, the referee will call timeout. The fighter is allowed a max of 5 minutes to recover from the foul. The 5 minutes begins when the referee calls timeout. The referee will allow the fighter 1 minute to 90 seconds to try and recover from the eye poke. During that time from 1 minute to 90 seconds, the fighter should be offered a cold compress or wet towel to use on the injured eye. The cold compress or wet towel can only be used on the injured eye nowhere else. So it's not too much of a change other than they're giving him a bit of time to recover from the eye poke before they evaluate it. So in that time, they're also going to give them something to help them with. Whereas before, it just seemed like if you got eye poke, tough luck kid, get over it. This time, they're actually going to give them like a towel or a compress or something to help with that. This also goes hand in hand a little bit with the cut person rule change. Then the last rule change is going to be about the ringside physician. So after the 1 minute to 90 seconds, the ringside physician will evaluate the eye. So this is just a continuation of the last rule. If at all possible, the physician needs to try and refrain from shining any light into the injured eye as that could cause the eye to spasm. I never even thought about that. That actually makes a lot of sense. They're just like blinding you right away after you got eye poked. There's no way you can see anymore. First you got a finger in your eye, now you got blinded by light and you're asked to continue after that. Don't ask the fighter if they can see at this time. Allow the fighter time to compose themselves as the fighter will be more receptive and able to give a verbal yes I can see if given the proper amount of time. Remember the fighter is allowed up to 5 minutes to recover in total from the eye poke foul. Yeah I like this a lot. I like this a lot and John Jones is seething at this point. He definitely doesn't like this. But they're doing a lot more now to help the fighter if they get injured by an eye poke. I think there should have been more emphasis on taking points away. But it seems like they're focusing a lot on the guy who got fouled and not on both guys, right? Because the one who does the following, there should be no leniency. If you poke someone in the eye, it should be probably an automatic point deduction. But maybe they're trying to control the damage here and not just go straight to the point deduction, right? If the guy can see better, he won't be permanently altered. But I think still, five minutes may not even be enough with the cold compress with the physician on the side, not shining light directly into the eye after the injury. But I ultimately do like the direction that they're going. I do like that they're not going to allow stalling as much as they were. They're going to do more when it comes to eye pokes. They're going to allow a cup person to come in there. It seems so silly that this wasn't even a thing before. And taking positions away are going to be a lot more emphasized now if the fighter fouls. So I really like these rules, but I want to see a lot more. There's a lot more that needs to be changed.